Welcome to the First Aid Cop Bites. This is episode 17 of season three. Uh, this is a podcast for Liverpool sports in Delaware and friends of those Liverpool supporters in Delaware. Uh, thanks so much for listening on your preferred platform. We're available on iTunes, Spotify, and 500 other platforms. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube. We had quite a few views last week. Um, so uh, hello to those people. I'm not sure actually if those people were tuned in because they saw me like sinking down because I, what I realized happened was my camera must have slipped up during the recording. And so I'm like cut off here, I think at the end of the recording. Anyway, Das from Baltimore's with me and Sean and I are in Delaware today. Um, good to see you both. It is uh, November, oh, it's actually November 29th. Um, and um, I love that you came across like you're surprised. My, oh my well, God, my useless it's script it's says it's November 28th. What did this happen? 28th, it feels most, like December already, doesn't it? My agenda says November yeah. 28th, so obviously I was thinking about a recording yesterday. Um, the Reds have had another good week, and we'll talk we'll talk some about that. Um, but at this point, it feels like a bit of a machine thing going on. Another 4 0 home win against Southampton. Um, quite in the end, a comfortable 2 0 win against Porto in a match that didn't matter unless you're interested in how much the Reds are making off these uh, these Champions League wins. Another 2.5 million euros, I believe, for that 2.5 for the 2 0 win. So, uh, well, we might as well start with Porto. Um, it, uh, in some ways, it was memorable because uh, Tyler Morton played his first full game for Liverpool. Uh, Nico Williams came in and played really well. I think the biggest thing for me that happened actually was, and maybe we'll start there, was the the furor between some of us on our WhatsApp group um, talking about the, the lineup before the game. Um, and if you listened to last week's podcast, I don't know a lot of you did, then the, the lineup made a lot of sense in terms of the conversation we had. Sean was not with us. Sean, who actually, I should have mentioned this at the very beginning, Sean, who turned 40 last week. Um, we, so Justin was really sharp and saying happy birthday. So we should at least say happy belated birthday to the wiser, maturer version of Sean um, that's on our show now, who had some issues with the lineup. So why don't we start with that? Yeah, so I, I just, um, the only thing, there were a lot of people kind of complaining about the lineup. And um I, I was, I was, my concern was only that it looked like we were playing Morton in the six. He's never played in the six before. And you're playing Ox, you know, to the one side of him, and you have Tiago on the other side. And um, I just sort of envisioned this scenario where Tiago was going to have to be covering the entire midfield, defending against Porto. And, um, you know, he has picked up a few injuries since he's been at the club. He's coming back from one still. So I just thought that was kind of a concern. I thought maybe they, they'd play Henderson in the six and Morton in the eight, which would, you know, give us a little bit more security since um, it wasn't really a must win game. So I thought that the defensive side of it, but in, in hindsight, it all seems kind of silly because of the way the games worked out. Morton did uh, pretty well. I, I so I, I thought, um, I thought he did very well for his debut, put it that way. I mean, he did fantastic for it being his debut. I kind of thought afterwards people were, you know, taking it to to an extreme that it wasn't really at. Like, it was fantastic for his debut, but I thought for the first 20 minutes he was really kind of struggling to get his feet from my point of view. Then he kind of settled into the match, and I thought he, I thought he did good. Um, the, the real impressive thing, honestly, with that match, and I got to say, like you and, and Daz pointed this out prior to the match, um, I thought Ox did a fantastic job defending – um, I, I think that's the best I've seen him play in three years in that Porto match. I mean, it, it might not seem like he did a lot, but he, he was just kind of, he was tracking back. He was helping kind of Morton out a lot. He was, he was just kind of all over the place. Um, so, um, you know, so it, it worked out in, in, in the end, it was pretty comfortable win. Um, I don't know what it is about Porto. We just always seem to cruise past them. Um, you know, I keep thinking one of these times they're going to show up because they they play really well against almost everybody except for us. And we just always seem to just cruise right past them. I'm, I'm not sure what, what it is, but, uh, you know, so that, that was, that was a concern, you know, just starting a young kid like that in his debut uh, in that kind of a position, but um, it all, it all went, went pretty well. So no complaints. 
I think one of the other things, and I'll go to you, Daz, that, uh, that I did pick up on, um, was a lot of chat in, in other places as well about why are you playing Salah and Mane? And I think we we addressed this last week with, like, who's going to tell them they're not playing another Champions League match where they can score goals and be in the shop window for uh, awards? I'm not sure we'll touch on awards before we're done with today's show. Um, but it, it seemed very appropriate that when Salah scored his goal, he went off immediately. Um because I think that puts him, I think he's only behind the the renowned former West Ham striker, Sebastian Haller, with uh, nine goals. Um, <laughs> he has uh, he has six, which matches Ronaldo, which is just bizarre. Um, so uh, that's all you make, want to make of the game, or, or even the lot. You talk about the lineups, but you want to talk about the game as well. Um, in terms, I'll, I'll, I guess we can go back on Tyler Morton here for a second. I was made up for him. Mm. Um, I think that it was the perfect match for him. He'd had a cameo before and it kind of set him up for this. And <clears throat> I, I think that Tiago strikes me as one of those guys that takes like the, the youngsters under his, not necessarily under his wing, but he's always there to look out for them. And I forget there was, uh, uh, it was Sunus. I forget who he was playing with, but Without being prompted by uh, by Uncle Bob, he was like I forget who it was. He just kind of sidled up next to him and kind of co- like almost caressed him through the through the match. And someone mentioned it afterwards. He's like, I never said anything to him. He just did it himself. And I can imagine that's kind of where Tiago was with a lot of these youngsters as well, because the, the goal that he scored, the first person he went over to was Nico Williams. Remember that at the against um, Southampton? Yep. So I think he's got a. I think he's good. He just seems to be one of those really savory characters that, that, and you can see the smile on his face and the, and the way that he kind of de- like in his dealings, he just seems like a really genuinely nice person. So it was the perfect compliment and pairing. It's not really a convoluted way of saying that he was a perfect pairing for someone like Tyler Morton. I don't think Hendo would have been any different had he, had he played him instead of Tiago. I think Hendo would have done the same thing, just been there just to kind of like, to mind him through the game to make sure there was no major slip ups, just to to coach him through it. And Sean's right. I think we want kids to do so well, but like we are sl- slightly critical of them simply because we know who's who they have to essentially displace to get in. So oftentimes we're we're, we're super critical of of kids, and I, and I fall in into the category with this one. I've done it with Necker Williams, and I've done it specific. Like I just and I, we touched on this last week, I believe. It's like it's really hard to to temper what you expect from them knowing exactly who's ahead of them and what it's going to take for them to, to supplant those people. But um, we've had, we've, we've had a couple of false dawns in the, in the past with, with, with kids, but I think under Klopp, it's a bit different. I think a lot of these kids seem to seem to come right. They, they, they're injected when they need to be there. And it's, I think a lot of it's got to do with the supreme amount of confidence that they go in there with, because it's the, the, it's almost like the boss is breathing it into them. And then they've got those guys around them. The whole culture in the club is like it's set up for these guys to succeed. You talk, you see what Simicus, uh, Jimica said about him and him and Robbo. It's not, it's not a, a rivalry per se. They're there to, they're there to push each other. And they have a, that's a healthy relationship. They're not there like trying to knife each other for spots. And I think that for Morton and a kind of a, it wasn't a must-win situation. I think that it definitely took a lot of pressure off of him. And I, by and large, he, ro- he rose to the occasion. I think Porto gave us that scare early on. They really should have scored early on. And yeah. and everyone's like, oh, it's a fight. Like, he didn't touch him. Some of us didn't touch him. He just absolutely fumbled the bag. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I think that this is a... a we seem to be the the agents of our own demise in many situations. Like it's it's giving the ball away silly sillily in, in, in midfield or misplaced passes or misplaced heads. And we, we do play on a knife's edge, so it's you can you can understand why sometimes if it does go awry, everyone's on the front foot looking to spring the other way. So it looks at that much more catastrophic where you have someone like Burnley where you've got 10 guys camped behind the ball. So if they do turn it over you've got four or five guys around that, that cock up to, to, to kind of cinch it up. Whereas we don't play that way. Everything's, everything's facing forward. It's we're always looking to get ahead and it's frustrating to watch. Cause I think, and I'll, cause I'm, I'm thinking about the Southampton match as well. Like the Tiago losing the ball, 
then uh, Ali making that that unbelievable coming out. Uh, and I'm, where the hell did he come from? I, it's like some sort of preternatural sense. He's like, oh, he's going to fuck up here. So I'm just, oh, you have to hit the button, by the way. I'm, I mean, he's, he's going to cock this up. So I'll, I'll, I need to be like on my six yard box as he passes it to make sure that I'm just going to snuff this out. So it was, and I think Klopp had intimated too that he's kind of tired of, well, he's a little frustrated, not tired necessarily. We're seeing some of the unnecessary, unnecessary like uh, uh, mistakes. Let, let, let's let's go back to let's let's talk about the Southampton game. Just want to wrap up the Porto game with one quick thought, set of thoughts. Um, I think Thiago may well be becoming my favorite Liverpool Spanish player ever, which I never thought Xavi Alonso would uh, lose that spot. But um, well, I, 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 I thought he was absolutely awesome. There was a guy in the pub said to me on Wednesday before the uh, the Porto game. I don't think Thiago is fast enough for the Premier League. Like, um, several people gave him a look, <laughs> but the goal he scored against Porto, I think maybe uh, I don't know if he's going to utter that again. If he's listening to the podcast, then you know, like, feel free to chime in as to uh, you know further comment. Jumping on that real quick, like Justin's talked about this before. I don't think a lot of people understand like what Thiago's role is and what he's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not he's not really a six. He's there basically to to help control the game, which is what what we've been missing a lot of this year. And it's kind of it's he does what Ginny used to do, but kind of in a different way. He does it um, just through his reading of the game and his skill on the ball, rather than Ginny used to use his big you know rear end to like box people out and and it, you know he kind of did the same thing. But um, and, and also just understanding where you know where to be in transition and you know, positionally kind of covering space. Um, and he does it all, he, you know, he, he just, the thing about him is that he reminds me of Vir, Virgil and that he, he makes it all look so easy. Mm. You know, it's like at any time he's on the ball, I mean, even when he gives the ball away, it's like, it just doesn't really phase him. Um, he just oozes that class, you know, and um, I think it's, it's really just a matter of getting into a rhythm with him. Um which he's been able to get get more of recently because he's kind of back playing now. But um, you know, it's, yeah, just understanding like what what his role is in the team, I think, is something that's lost on people. So you were saying that, Paul, in my head, I saw one of those scenes from a movie where he says it and then it pans to outside and you see that person flying through the window, and there's three of you like standing in the open with like dusting your hands off. Yeah, DJ Jazzy Jeff from the Fresh Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what, what was funny was he. I think he he went away uh, before the Tiago goal and came back shortly afterwards. And like somebody else said to him, like, "Yeah, Tiago, not that not good enough for the Premier League, hey." <laughs> oh, but he scored. And then everyone's was like, "He didn't just score. <laughs> he didn't just score. You have to see this goal." We okay. haven't even talked about that. Okay, so here's the, I, I saw this on the internet. And I was like, and I went back and watched it about four or five million times, mm-hmm. and. Like someone's like, it never touched the ground. I'm like, it had to have touched the ground. And it's like, if it did, it was like, it must have touched the blade of grass. It was, it was like watching someone throw a Frisbee, like the yeah. way that it went down. And then it, it's like, almost like it flattened down to a, like a, to a disc. And it just, it was, it was incredible. And then the yeah. cheeky bollocks after the game says, yeah, I've, I've had one better than that. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck off, mate. Is he ox? He's like, ah, oh, come on. Cool. It was like a rising fastball in baseball. It was just like, it was crazy. Um, cool. Went down and up. You know, yeah. What have you heard from Klopp? He did actually say he does that in training all the time. Oh God! <laughs> well, have you seen like so, some of these training videos of Tiago? I, I think it was him and and Rodri in like the Sp- Spanish camp in the summer. It's like the ball four hundred yards across the pitch. Yeah, they're just they're just passing it fifty yards back and forth without it touching the ground. Just like you know, trap it off their chest, juggle it once, and then punt it fifty yards. It's incredible. Um, just like the skill level. That he has, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 I, I've said before, if we can keep him and Fabinho healthy, I, I don't, I don't think there are many teams that are going to take points off us. Um, quick, quick question: To anyone's, I, I haven't, because I don't do stats and and I and I barely read anything. But has anyone, has anyone, gone through the a quote unquote group of death with full points? I don't know how often it's happened where a team has won all six matches. But I'm, sure, I'm sure it's dead, happened too. a number of times before. But, so, like, you know, it, it can't have happened that often. 
So I think the issue with that is the stats people would collect the data on who scored when, but they wouldn't do group of death things. Group of death is like this nebulous, you know, not very good pundits analysis of, of like a, so, so I think you need to get two people together to make that collection of insights. Okay, so let's just put it, okay, pundits aside, I think anyone that's watched any football and then for any period of time in their entire life would, would probably universally agree that this was the most difficult group. Oh, and I yeah. think by and large, most of them are good enough to understand, like, like if, having watched any, again, any decent amount of football would say, would be able to pick out a particular, it happens in the World Cup all the time too, like it's clearly the strongest group. Like, so the question is for mom, if you're listening, can you check on this for us? To see who, if this has ever happened before, that like the quote unquote most difficult group has had someone go through with maximum points. So, so sorry, let me give you a serious answer to that. I think one of the problems is that people trot out group of death with a bit of like more frequency than it deserves. When I think, I think, so, didn't someone say United's group this year was group of death ish? I don't know. I, I can't remember which one. Their, their group was ridiculously easy this year, I think. Was it? But, I mean, if you go through and look at the groups and you look at the third-place team and find a third-place team better than AC Milan, who's second in Serie A right now, and then a fourth-place team that's better than Porto, like, it's it's clearly the toughest group. Yep. As I, but you can't – it would be impossible, I think, to go back and look at, like, what the toughest group every year is based on, like, at the time because – the way teams end up at the end of the year isn't often how people expect them to be at the beginning of the year or even how they're playing at the beginning of the year. But um, I'd be interested to see how many, how many teams have just won all six matches, period. There can't, there can't be that many. No English team has ever won all six matches. Yeah. There can't be that many that have, you know, and and if you go back and look at those groups, I'm sure they were all easier than this one. Stella's going to take that personally. (laughs) <laughs> I'll so, we'll take that personally. Well, so you know he's playing in San Siro. There's no question about that, right? <laughs> it, it'll be a uh, even if it's a whatever it is a five four one. He's going to be the one. Um, so, uh, so one thing I would say though is, I think that group helped us versus some of the groups we've ended up in, with like Luda Goretz and Red Star Belgrade and. All these other teams, where like you've you've kind of had such a range of teams you're playing, we've ended up slipping up against teams we shouldn't have. So, so I do think like all these matches are proper matches as, as helped our mindset. And the travel, the distance of travel hasn't been as bad as it is sometimes mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. You get these Russian teams, or you know, yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, Ukraine. Those are tough trips. Yeah. So. I think we got much more out of that than I thought we would. So, um, put, put, and Athletic, we didn't even talk about the fact that Atletico Madrid could still get eliminated in this uh, whole thing. It should be, um, you know, not a reason for us to give up in Milan, of course. But uh, that would be, if we did lose in Milan, that would be a really sil- a big silver lining, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> I can see Klopp playing his wife and his kids in that game. With Salah, <laughs> right? Who definitely needs another goal to catch Sebastian Haller. Okay, let's move on to Southampton. I know we've touched on this a little bit. Um, I, I think before we started recording, I, I kind of looked at this going like, well, this was just too straightforward. And there's this drama going on everywhere else in the Premier League that uh, we're, we've, we've kind of moved past. But to be fair, Klopp did say um, he was unhappy about the fact that Allison had to make such good saves, um, but uh, you know, thought Thiago was great. To your point, you made earlier, Daz Robertson seemed to have responded to the fact that people were telling him he wasn't playing very well, and that Sumacast was uh, in 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 fine fashion. Uh, you know what else? Another assistant trend. Um, we're, we're way into only Salah teller territory, which we talked about last week. Like only Salah has more assists than. Dot dot dot. <laughs> name the player. Only Salah has more goals than dot dot. Yeah, whoever it is. More shots than. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I thought it was great. Given Pogba got like twenty five assists against Leeds and was leading the the assist table till now, and now Salah's finally caught him up. Seven. He had seven. It was twenty five. 
So, Sean, I'll start with you. Southampton, what do you make of the whole difficult match? Maybe. I guess I I I thought we'd win the match, but I was a little bit. I don't know. I I don't know why I was I was thinking that it could be more challenging. I mean, Southampton had, had been playing a little bit better. They've been defending a little bit better in recent games. Um, you know, and and our um, our defense at times has been a little shakier, but it it didn't show up at all in this match. I mean, they did have a couple of good quality chances, but I mean, we we easily could have scored six. I mean, our attack is just yeah. ridiculous right now. I mean, you know, like if if we don't, it's weird because I, I guess I, I'm, I keep looking for reasons, I think, to be unsure at matches because I think back to the 1920 season when our defense was just like rock solid. I mean, we just wouldn't give up anything. You could always count on us to, to see a game out uh, with one goal lead. And um, I guess it hasn't looked as much like that this season, mostly, you know, with the transition, vulnerability and transition, but I really do think, I, I think Tiago helps resolve a lot of that. Um, and um, just because positionally he's, he's much better suited to playing that position than, you know, Curtis Jones or Ox or a lot of the other players we've had there this year. Um, a lot of, a lot of players in that position tend to get sucked up, feel a little too high. And then we're not in position to kind of cover and transition. Um, and Tiago's, you know, not going to do that. Um, but um yeah, it was, it was, I mean, in the end, it was pretty easy, um, you know, and uh, long may it continue because if we keep scoring like that, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun season. Yeah. You can't convince me that, that, that Tiago didn't do that on purpose. Given the ball away? Yeah. Like, so he's like, <laughs> watch this. I'm going to roll with my right foot, ping it with my left off this ball bag's thigh and go in top bins. What? It's like, it's almost like one of those guys in the snooker shot. <laughs> Side yeah. pocket off the rail. Watch this. Uh, that was a deflected goal. So yeah, and, and um, I mean that was pretty. I, I thought it was pretty incredible how he took that down and kind of made the run. I mean, it did deflect in, but um, as he drew it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, even if you don't acknowledge that he might have planned the deflection, the foot over the ball said Bednarek like completely the wrong direction. Like I'm going to shoot. No, I'm not. That, that was right right yeah that i mean that that move kind of on the fly like you did it was pretty i thought that was pretty impressive but he's uh, not fast enough for the premier league right we we, we agreed on that just kidding that? he's not fast oh, enough for the premier league. <laughs> <laughs> cut to man getting thrown out a window <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Diago, you know he, he he has a presence on the pitch like he you know he, he doesn't need to be fast enough He's, uh, he's, I don't know. You just get this sense that he's like football royalty out there playing or something like that. I don't know if you guys get that, but it's just like he, he just oozes class almost like Virgil does. Like I said, like you just, you feel like you're just waiting for him to settle in and, and dominate every match, you know? Um, and I don't, I don't think he's quite there yet. I mean, and the crazy thing about this match and some of our other matches is that it really does look like we have a level or two to improve. Like, like I feel like we can, we this team can definitely get better if it stays healthy, um, which is which is kind of crazy to think about. But well, who was who was the ref? Is it Mariner this weekend? Yeah, last weekend. See, that's so that was like a pre-Christmas miracle that he actually called a foul as Sala was getting guillotined oh, and dragged to the ground. I'm like, <gasps> did he just give that as a foul? Oh my fucking word! Miracles will never cease. But not in the box. Never that in the box. Yeah. It's baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> Did you? So I, I watched it back. Did you see how many times that he got? Like this is the standard tackle now on Salah. It's like headlock, and and the the shock was he actually gave a foul twice. But the guy must have done it five or six times. It's like a hostage situation. He's got a gun in his back. He's pulling him backwards to make his escape. Well, the the the, the number of times that Salah and Mane get just kicked, like kicked as hard as a defender can kick them in the leg, and get no ball, and there's <laughs> yeah. no foul. I'm like, what the hell? 
<laughs> Those are my favorite parts of the match is watching Mane roll like across the pitch football. like a chip packet. Oh, he got well eaten. It's like, like a chip <laughs> packet in the wind. There he goes. <laughs> oh, look, he's diving. Wouldn't somebody just kick the crap out of him? Like, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you go down? Like, I'm, I'm just, I, I have a hard time. You see, and you see this stuff like across the board. It's like, oh, you know, he's they're, they're diving. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, if you look at some of the stuff that some of the other players go down for, Sterling and. Mm. I mean, uh, are, are, these these guys are actually getting kicked hard by huge defenders. That yeah. was a, that was a penalty against Gabriel, by the way. I can't convince me otherwise in the Arsenal game. And oh yeah, had, yeah. It, the it, cheetah probably, yeah. So shot I'm, in his face. Ball I was going it. to. I was. I was actually going to say, don't take me down the rabbit hole of the foul on on Salah in the Arsenal game, but you have. Oh. Call me Alice. Let's 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 come back. Let's come back. So, so there clearly is something wrong. I do think this season that, um, well, that because they're not giving as many penalties, that it it doesn't affect us as egregiously as it has done in previous seasons. They don't it give up. Ollie. It affected Oli. He got fired as a result. Think about it. Right, because he didn't get as many penalties. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Fault. So, the. I do want to go back to one Tiago thing, and then then we'll we'll, we'll move on to any more comments about Southampton. Um, I watched the the Premier League uh, as a channel, um, and they showed some stuff on Peacock, and they had a I think it was a weekend review they did today, and uh, I was watching that just again for some uh, kind of insights, and they they showed the Tiago goal, and the pundits it was Dion Dublin and um, uh, oh, Don Hutchison spent five minutes saying you need to go find a clip of the champions league game or watch tiago's goal and they both like went through it and 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 dublin ended the whole sequence by saying i used to do that all the time and everyone in the studio laughed <laughs> but but like they don't have the right the premier league doesn't have the right at all to show the champions league games and they spent minutes talking about that goal um and they didn't do it was... enough justice that should have been hours <laughs> well it's not it's not their content so they're usually not interested in showing anybody else's which made it all the more interesting i thought okay so southampton any more to say what do we miss sean I just, yeah, I, I, one other thing i wanted to say is um there's briefly because i don't want to go off on it but um there's been a lot of chatter about um kanate the last few days like there's something about kanate not being good enough and I'm, i don't know what the hell these people are watching but like you know, in the Southampton game, he had the one the, – the one, I think he had, like, two errors. One was relatively minor. But the one he gave the ball away, you know. But, you know, he's a young player. He's coming straight into this team, which not many players do. Um, and I think overall, personally, I think he's been just as good as Matt, Matip when he's played this year. Um, Matip's had a couple pretty bad games and hasn't gotten nearly as much criticism – um, I would say that you're looking at me, Paul. I would say that the match against Brentford when Ivan Tony just dominated him the entire match was, was not his best game. It's just me personally. But um, so anyway, the point is, I, I think Kanate has been pretty darn good. He's made a couple of mistakes. And people are jumping all over him. And it's just like, this guy's not going to walk into the team and be Virgil van Dyke. You know what I mean? Like we paid a decent amount for him, but he's still pretty young. Virgil, Virgil wasn't Virgil when he was his age. You know, like we got to have some reasonable expectations here. The guy's just come into the team. I think he's doing pretty darn well. Um, that's so. That's just been one thing this week that's popped up, and I'm like, give me a break, people. Like you're just looking for something to complain about if you're complaining about that because we won the game four nil, and overall the guy's been very good. I think his pace, his recovery pace, and his size in that position is great for our system because it, it helps prevent teams from kind of. Um, hitting us over the top in that area um, and overall he's you know he's very good on the ball I mean, very very few complaints from me I mean just his his uh, size and presence alone is is pretty impressive and for him to have that athletic ability and pace on top of it I mean I'm pretty optimistic moving forward uh, of him as a center back so um, anyway I just wanted to say that because there you know there's been quite a bit of criticism on social media and i think there might have been one or two articles about it and i'm like the hell are these people talking about you know this guy's a young center back coming into the team it's only november so i do think that goes back to some of the the, the like if you, if you just keep on winning and there's no drama 
like you have to find something if you're a journalist. I do think yeah. a bit of that going on with with Canate. Um, I, I I I won't comment too much on the Matty point. All I would say is Matty's playing Brentford in the reverse fixture. I don't think you'll see any issues. I think a lot of it's about sc- like scouting. I love Matip. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've, I've loved Matip. I've said he should start for years, especially when Lovren was here. So don't get me wrong there. But, um, you know, it's it's great to have options. It's great that we can rotate, you know, um, our, our center backs around and, you know, gives us the freedom to even play um, Gomez at right back, uh, you know, if we if we need some filler there and, and if we get an injury, he can fill in any time. So um, that's a luxury we certainly didn't have last year. So, so if anyone's playing people, first day cop, I'm sorry. If anyone's playing first day cop, it's bingo. Like Sean sneaking in a reference to Lovren. You, you obviously <laughs> won that. Sorry, does no. You were, that was that was a great point. I was I wouldn't have made it, but you were absolutely right. <laughs> um, I think it's we just. As a fan base, and as it's, you always want to come for the king, and like, and sometimes you have to go through has really been to find something, and I think that's what journalists are doing. They're going through the collective, collective bins out in front of Kirby now, looking for something. And it's, you're right. It's such a, like, he's a young kid. He's played how many competitive games for us now in league and, and Champions League five, like, maybe yeah, yeah, six maybe something like that. Yeah. That's, it's and that position that's rhythm it's well in most yep. positions it's rhythm based but and he's he, he vacillates between two two different center backs when he plays so it's like it's it, he's not he hasn't built that up he's one for the future and uh, again like you said the the pace that he has uh, when he when he <laughs> i would say eased is a nice way of putting what he did to that porto player when he ended up in row x <laughs> i think it was it's like it was effortless. He's just. I, I love the idea of like either he and Matip or he and Virgil walking into the box for set piece, and like what the other the opposing team must be thinking like what the hell, you know how do you how do you prevent either one of these two from getting a hit on the ball, um, but yeah and and he's twenty two. I just I couldn't remember how old he is. He's younger than I even thought he was. Yeah. Um, doesn't turn twenty three until May. So. Um, like you said, he's, you forget, you know, sometimes you forget these people are human beings. Like it's a 22 year old kid. He just moved to a new country, a new team, you know? Um, so anyway, my son loves his Twitter game. Cause he, whenever he plays, he always throws out some, uh, some, some anime gif. And it's, it's usually something that my son really loves like Dragon Ball Z or, or Naruto or something like that. And it's, he's, I, yeah, he's, he's a youngster, man. It's like, he has, like this is some of the stuff that we like, what the hell is this all about? Like, like you said, he's still a human being. Give him, give him a second. Like, let him, let him, let him express himself. Like he likes to watch anime. Like, it's not like he's out shooting animals in the face. <laughs> Just easing, easing dudes off balls and watching anime. It's uh, so he's eight, like years, a- eight years younger than Virgil then. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 a- yeah. I, so, so uh, let, let, let's look ahead because um, clearly, there was more to talk about than I thought there was about what had already happened in the last two games. Um, but Sean, one of your messages did make me laugh when you said uh, that you didn't think the Liverpool lineup was that tall against uh, Porto and Canate looks about six foot nine. Oh, well, yeah, it, well, that was, um, who did we have? We had, um, I'm trying to remember who started. So it was Mane, uh, well, like Tiago, yeah, Tiago, uh, oh, Morton, yeah. Ox, mm-hmm. um, Simicus, and uh, Nico. So I think, I think we only had three players over six foot in that match, right? But they were all over six foot by a long way, weren't they? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> One of them was Allison, too, though, right. So, so but Ox, uh, one thing is, like, think about this. I think he's at the point now that he knows how to swaddle. He knows how to change nappies. Sorry, diapers. <laughs> and the kid's probably in a regular sleeping routine now. So you might, that's probably one of the reasons that is upswing in, upswing in his performances, other than the fact that he's actually getting a string of performances that he can put together. Okay. Simicus looks more rested. Like he's the bags under his eyes are not as not as prodigious <laughs> as they were before. So maybe him and him and Ox are sharing the sleep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Ox, um, it's just, I think I heard somebody say he's played more in the last month than he has in like the last two years for us or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's wow. some crazy wow. stat, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, but it, I mean, it's great. I mean, it, you know, we all like, I all remember that period when he was in the team, he was incredible when we were on that first champions league run and he just, he hasn't gotten back to that. So, you know, God bless him. I, I, I hope he can. I mean, that'd be amazing yeah. for our season if he can. Um, he's been, he's been great recently. So, you know, I think everybody wants him to, to do well. And he has been the last couple of games. It's just, you know, you get to a point sometimes with players where you're just like, uh, I mean, you know, sometimes we get like that with, uh, or some people get like that with Nobby. Um, but, you know, it just kind of goes to show that the Klopp's patience with some of these players goes to, goes a long way. So, so I, 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 need go, holes. I need to go back to this. <laughs> <laughs> two things. Sean, I need to go back to listen to last week's episode because we talked about like how the injuries and the form gets all messed up with Chamberlain and, and Kaita. Um, because I think the things they've done have been more impressive. Like, what did Justin say? The, the Oxley Chamberlain was the fourth highest scorer in the, the Premier League winning season. Yeah, example. Um, of, of like how we uh, the narrative gets twisted around players mm-hmm. like them like tiago it has been like oh he's always injured you know yeah not that good you know so the other thing i would say actually this is for you Daz. I, I watched the uh the game last weekend in the starboard which in, in this part of the world is quite a famous bar in dewey beach delaware and uh one of the guys who came to watch there weren't that many but one of them said oh i love that guy who's on your podcast and i'm like i mentioned a few names i'm like uh and uh uh, oh, uh, Das from Baltimore. Yeah, that guy. He's really funny. <laughs> That's the so, best five bucks I ever spent. So, so Zachary, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> so just uh, I have no idea. I've gone down. Let, let's, so we're, we're finished with what's done. Let's move on. This week, there's a lot of football going on. This week, two whole rounds of uh, Premier League. Um, uh, hoping for more Thomas Tuchel meltdowns. Um, maybe, maybe I can't see City slipping up, unfortunately. But we, you know, we need to focus on our own business. We play the old enemy on uh, Wednesday night at Goodison Park, which we've only won once in nine visits. Um, I, but I, I, I can't, I, so I didn't research this very well because I think they've lost six in a row. They haven't won for six. I think might be it. They've got no Calvert Lewin. Um, who else is someone else missing? Yeah, he's oh. off shaving, isn't he? Yeah, Yerry Mina is missing, and apparently their Ooh. record without Mina playing is awful. Um, so Everton, I'll start with you, Daz, because you always have opinions about uh, the team from Goodison Park, managed by uh, the, the once great Rafa Benitez. Okay, so. <laughs> That place might, well, it's wood anyway, so it might actually burn to the ground with the collective incandescence of fans if we mash them at Woodison. I swear to God, like the collective fume will get together and just watch that place just turn to fucking ash around them. They are, have you, they, were, they were booing them this weekend. Uh, what, the, what, was that before the game? Or am I yeah, making that up? It was awful. I'm like, Wow. So, like, if they do lose, I would suggest that 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 Rafa Benitez has like one of those slip harnesses, and a and a fucking helicopter just flies over the top and drops a line in the middle of the pitch. He just runs out, clips in, whoop, and they just pull him the because he might not make it out of there alive. If we, I'm telling you, if we get hammered, look, they're always up for it. And I think that Klopp said so much. He's like, yeah, let's see what we're going in there to play football. Let's see what something along those lines. I'm I'm ad libbing, um, and it's and he's right you know it's i think it's i think it's going to be more blood and thunder for them and i really hope that virgil van dyke is just chomping at the bit and he just goes through about five people with his own head to get to the ball and just buries it in the back of the net right through jordan pickford's fucking t-rex little arms the bastard uh, honestly like that, that that would be the that would be the, the most fitting way for him to come back is just to, is to put one to put one in there cuz uh, we were really really tame against him and the, and the, and the re- return fixture. And it, it angered me to no end that we had, it seemed like we just rolled over and had our bellies tickled by them. It was, it was, it was, it was frustrating considering how it went and how we got hosed out of that game. 
the the, the one at Goodison. Yeah. It's just I I really want these guys to 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 like to be eating like bloody steaks as we speak and just go in there just just angry. You know, and we don't though. We're not really a we're not not really a gnarly bitter team. Like we have a couple of guys. Like Sadio is quietly a bit of a shit house. Um, so actually, Tiago is too. Some of he's got he's got a bit of snideness to him, but we don't have anyone that's going to go in with a massive chip on their shoulder and 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 give someone a, and, and welly someone or reduce someone. Fabi does that naturally, but not not out of hand based on the occasion. So uh, I'd I'd love to see us go in there and, and smash them. I think that Benitez realizes what he needs, and he, and this is a this is a, he doesn't need to pin anything to the wall. It's us. Like he's, I can't be like, look, they're, they're booing us, and that uh, that's you're playing Liverpool at home. Like, show everyone that you have the types of bollocks that everyone thinks that you have. And so that's, I think that they're going to come for us. Who's who's, who's officiating? Oh, do we know. Do we know? I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, well, Sean looks it up. What, what I'm thinking though is, you've already you're picking the team, right? It's like well, there's Hendo's definitely playing, Fabinho's definitely playing, Thiago's definitely playing, Mane's definitely playing, Andy Robertson's definitely playing. And yes. maybe put Shimikas on the other side, right? <laughs> <laughs> so who's your centre back pairing? It's got to be Virgin, Virgin, and Matip, right? Ah, uh, you know, I, I, uh, this might be a Nat Phillips moment. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, I, I actually think that uh, he might sit Tiago and play Milner. No. Oh, good call. No. Oh, can't. Milner's a good call. That you can't. <laughs> Get I mean, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily minutes. want that, but he has been talking about rotating players as they come back from injury. The other one I wonder is is, is kind of a crazy shot. I wonder if he starts uh, Divi, um, just because That's, of the history of the, any, any the big show, body. Yeah. You know, just because I, you know, it's it, Klopp is aware of. Um, I think he he said something recently about how, you know, with this match we want to come to play football and and sort of question if they they do sort of. So it wouldn't surprise me if he, st- you know, if he started like, you know, Robbo, Milner, Divi, you know, in place just to kind of have that gnarl that you're talking about and just, you know, be up for it. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think it's one we, we should definitely win. I mean, um, they don't have covert loan up front. Uh, their defense isn't great. And, um I think I think DeCurry and Allen are healthy now, which makes them much better in midfield. Yeah. But still, with that two-man midfield, like we should be able to run through them anyway. Um, you know, so um, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty confident we'll get the win. I'm just, you know, again, like I'm just hoping, like that said, not going wood that uh, we don't get any injuries from any stupid play. You know, them them going nuts if we start blowing them out. Um, yeah, so. It's just one of those. I, I, I think I think it'll it should be a comfortable win for us, but um, we gotta we gotta be ready for for their uh, you know extra foot in on some of those tackles. I like your divvy shot, but can you sit can you sit Jota after he scores two, almost three? Could quite easily have had three. Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm saying all that not based on logic. I'm saying it based on the fact that Klopp tends to do crazy things in this this uh, fixture. You know, like you said, in, this, in the past, he'll start Shaq. Like, he, he always – he seems to always throw out some kind of crazy lineup in this fixture. So, um, it wouldn't – you know, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I'd prefer for Jota and Tiago to play, but um, I'm not going to be surprised to see something crazy because he does that a lot. So, so the preface to the comment you made about um, we're going to play football, we'll see what they do, was uh, people make too much of this fixture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, we – He's not got a good record at Goodison Park. And I don't know if that's like psychology, but if he follows through on that, I think it could be like the, what did we, was a 5 2 we beat them two years ago at Anfield mm-hmm. with uh, Origi and Shakiri both started. Um, yeah. It, it, uh, that, it could easily be that. I mean, not on paper, this should be, you know, our 18th game in a row with two goals or more, right? Um, but we found it hard to score goals at Goodison Park. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Look, let's let's you know, let's. You just said it. They haven't won a match in seven. You know, they're fourteenth in the table. Yeah. They're they're not a very good team. Terrible. Right? Yeah. They're, they're really know, like, like we should. They're we should go over there and beat them pretty easy. Um. And and you know I I, I mean I, I don't think Rafa hasn't done a great job there, but I also think he's kind of 
picking up the result of a lot of mess over a number of years. I mean, how many managers have they had in the last five years now? And ever since this new owner came in, they brought in, I think, a new director of football. They've been a mess. They, you know, they're buying different players for different systems every couple of years. And then this past year, Rafa comes in, they spend no money. So, um, you know. Did you guys see the... Um... No sofas, no lamps, no nothing. <laughs> One of you shared with me that was it the 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 guy the Damon Farley the impressionist mm-hmm. who's doing an impression of Agent Rafa. I thought I thought that was hilarious. If you haven't seen it, haven't seen it's it. Very good. Oh, um, but but the the I think the biggest point about it was Solomon Rondon is your backup striker. He's been playing in China for two years. It just yeah, anyway, I'm going to regret saying that, aren't I? But. Uh, Yes, so the most difficult match of the week should be Wolves on Saturday. Um, they've conceded very few goals um, under that new coach, is a Bruno Lager, uh, and uh, they seem to have Jimenez back. They're not scoring a lot of goals, but they're not losing a lot of matches either. Uh, and uh, generally, uh, that, that stadium has been difficult for us. Um I don't know, don't know why, but it seems like it's hard to play there for Liverpool. It's um, we we've had a couple of really down and dirty games against Wolves in the recent past. There was the one in the title-winning season where we could quite easily have lost that game or tied. Not necessarily lost, but they they looked way more threatening than the scoreline was. What did we win that one? Two two nil, two one forget what it was, but I remember it being kind of very close. It was a lot closer than, and kind of, maybe it was just because we were so, the expectation was that we had to do well to win. So there was, like you say, I, I didn't go back and watch the match. I hardly ever do. But like, when you watch it back, you're like, yeah, they had a couple of chances. Yeah. That's one of the things that we forget as, as, as fans, like as dominant as any team is, the other team will get a couple of opportunities. And like look at look at United this last weekend. They were dead and buried in that first half. It was they were always going to try and score on the counter, and they were gifted one. And so it, it's as 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 defeated as a team will look. And we are the kings of this, giving teams an opportunity to get a foothold back in a game. So, and I think that a lot of people probably would have told you this at the beginning of like when we were, were playing Southampton, because one of the things, like just to, not to rehash it, but Southampton came to, like they were closing down passing lanes really well. The counter press was very good for the first 15, 20 minutes, even though they were down 1-0. Um, they, they, they were no schmucks, you know? And so any, any team that's going to come at us is going to, is probably fancies themselves to have a sniff because we have allowed some kind of soft goals in the, in the very recent past too, as good as we have, as good as we've been. Um, so I don't think that Everton won't fancy themselves out of it. I don't think Wolves will probably probably play along similar lines. They'll they'll pack it and try and try and score on the counter. There's one thing I will say, like I I, I got to watch the the USA um, Mexico game um, at live, and I ca- I kind of kept an eye on Jimenez, and he's he's a handy player, man. He's like he's he, he gets himself about for a big fella. His movement is is bright. He, he finds good spaces. He doesn't mind running channels. He's a real nuisance. So it's, I don't know, I, I, I like our games against Wolves. I, I tend to have my bollocks in my throat most of the time because like it's, I'm expecting it to be like a gnarly game. But like I, I'm looking forward, well, this is a great week of football for me. Like I'm looking forward to both of these games for different reasons. So, so the, they, they are more, um, so I, I've seen a few of their games uh, for various reasons. They're much more attack-minded than they were under um, the ex-Spurs coach, Nuno. Um, so, so to me they could actually be a lot more dangerous this season than they have been even in those seasons when we played them and mm. they were difficult um, and certainly on, on paper they're more of a concerning matchup for us um, because they've got kind of pace on the wings uh, trickery on the wings which doesn't play well if we're trying to play like our whatever yeah. three or, or really three three five formation that's an extra player right three two five whatever formation is um so to sean um wolves have you seen much of them this season i haven't watched much of them this season but um i know they have uh 
Samedo playing right wing back and Connor Cody in the center of their defense. So I'd like our chances against that that defense. That's, that's a high. I mean, you know, we're gonna have we're gonna have the uh, the majority of the ball. You know that. And if you're putting if you're putting pressure on a defense that includes those two, um, I don't know. And I, I think it. A lot of the times we've been in trouble this year. It's it's been giving up an early goal or against teams that can hit us in transition. And um, I guess, you know, they could hit us in transition. And Jimenez is, is a very good player. He's not super pacey. I mean, he's not, he's not going to be the one that hits, hits you on the counter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like, I like our chances in this one. Um, like I said, I mean, Samedo kind of on that, that right side, that's, that's got, you know, Mane and Rabo and Tiago, if they play kind of written all over it. Um, and then Connor Cody in the middle, you'd imagine that we're going to match up pretty well on set pieces uh, with our defenders and Fabinho in the, in the game. So, um, you know, but they have played well. Um, they, I was just looking at, at their schedule. They, they haven't conceded in the last two, but in the previous five matches, they conceded, I think it was eight. Um, so that's not like a great defensive record. I mean, they're giving up, you know, we're like one goal game, but against us, you know, it's a, one goal against a normal team against us. It's like four. And it seems to be the way it works out this year. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to match up against us right now um, with a healthy lineup. Um, and hopefully we get some more players back healthy soon and keep it going. Um, this stretch that we're starting right now is really, you know, we, we have, we have the opportunity to really run off a lot of wins here over the, over the next month um, potentially. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Mm-hmm. I think it begins, though, by winning these two away matches. Then we'll be in a much stronger position, even if we have to rely on Connor Cody falling over for Bobby Firmino to score the goal. Right? <laughs> about the story, like, two seasons ago. Like, yeah. he was able to win the season league so badly, he fell over. Anyway, I think Connor Cody's actually quite a reasonable player. But, um, yeah. He's not a bad player. I just don't think he's a great defender. If that makes sense, <laughs> does, he, does he play defense? He, well, he does play center back. He plays in the middle of a back three. He reminds me of Ben White. You know, they're 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 both like decent on the ball, but they're not the best center backs. Um, He's a terrible CEO, but isn't he the CEO of the country of the company? <laughs> you know what I mean, though. In the spirit of CEOing, he's good for what they ask him to do. All right, most of the time. Paul Tierney on Wednesday. Hmm. He's a bit of a ball bag. Yeah, yeah. Feel like we need a better referee than that, but there aren't that many in the Premier League. There aren't, there aren't very many. Yeah, the lobby, there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. like uh, the, the Andre Mariner the other day surprised me by giving fouls that I would never have expected. So maybe we can expect a bit more. It's Teeny from Manchester. He's not another one. Aren't they all? It feels like they just cloned out of Manchester. Out of Manchester, like it's a production line of ship refs just like coming straight out of Manchester. Okay, so I was just looking at this. So we've got Everton Wolves, then Milan. So it's a nice, a nice European trip. Villa, Newcastle. Then it's Spurs, Leicester, and Leeds, and then Leicester again. That's that little turn right there, right around the New Year, is is going to be. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. No. Well, except for Leicester. We smash every time that Brendan's in charge. And Why has ever been doing this? <laughs> I want to stop having you on this damn podcast. Like just, just dragging your balls over everything. Like, yeah, we're going to hump those guys. We're going to smash Villa, them guys. I mean, the, Villa has played well under Gerard so far. I, and that, that one would, you know, I, I would wonder a little bit about that one. But I think we'll take them at Anfield. Um, <laughs> you know. I'm putting well, my house on all these predictions. How about how about we just Spurs? You know. Spurs under Conti is a tricky one, but oh, actually, that was the one I thought was the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> no way, Leicester under Brendan is always the easiest. It's even it's even easier than Arsenal under Arteta. Well, let's look in ahead of ourselves. This week, <laughs> Everton Wolves. Uh, next league game is Villa, well, which will be interesting. And the game you didn't mention after the list. Was we play Chelsea away after all of that? Yeah, so yeah. Minus up, minus a couple of guys, right? Isn't that uh, the Yeah, league of the yeah. That's that, that one's going to be tough. So, yeah. so you can dwell on that, or uh, so. So one more thing, you can look more generally around what's going on in the league, the teams to be afraid of. No, um, I, I'd say mine would be 
I'm, no, I'm not afraid of, of Tottenham unless something magical happens. I mean, Conte only has so much to work with there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to you first, Sean, because uh, you're so confident about the next month. Like You can talk about <laughs> whatever else you want. Sean's got us holding the fucking trophy, like they're handing us the trophy next week. Uh, just no, I, 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 just, I, I think I think th- I think we match up well against most of those teams. I, I just they're, they're not the types that park the bus, and you know we tend to do well against those kinds of teams. Can, so can I, uh, can I just say one thing in response to that? Have you seen Man City's schedule? Yeah, I, well, I'm sure it's easier. Is it's it really easy. Yes, it, it yeah. really is. Yeah, well, they played a lot of hard games already. So, yeah. oh yeah. So. um yeah, I mean, I think we covered we, we covered everything I would have had to cover. I mean, I, the one thing I'll mention, I'll steal Daz's thunder here, is, is uh, Mo Salah finishing seventh in the Ballon d'Or uh, voting is kind of a joke today. Messi winning winning it. Um, it's just like, you know, how seriously can you even take that award now? <laughs> it's just um, Lewandowski. Yeah, I, I feel like this is the second time he's been robbed of it uh, where he should have won it. Um but you know, it's it's uh, it's about as um, just as uh, you're going to get with UEFA and FIFA these days with anything. So, um, well, it, Messi, it, Messi will win at the we'll win, we'll win it two years after he's retired, <laughs> <laughs> and then Ronaldo the year after that. So, so did I read you correctly that Ronaldo came in ahead of Salah in the voting? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like so, so my my fourteen year old son came to me and said, "What's the Ballon d'Or about? Is it trying to be a joke?" Well, and, and Kareem Kareem Benzema finished fourth, and I'm like, "What? Ahead of all these other players? I mean, mm. I don't know. It's it's ahead of Salah. I mean, it, it just I don't know. Well, he won the Ballon d'Or in jail. <laughs> just crazy, but." Oh. Anyway, that was one of the things that stood out to me today. But yeah, yeah. So, so I thought the uh, it just and last word will go to you, Daz. One of the things I thought was hilarious was after Jorginho's um, efforts yesterday with his inability to trap the ball, um, he finished where in the Ballon d'Or? Third. Third. It's crazy. I mean, he happened to be on teams that won a couple of trophies this year, and it's like they act like he was a star player. He, he was, you know bottom half in terms of like who you're selecting on the team sheet for either one of those sides like it you know clearly if Italy don't go to the world cup it's his fault right, <laughs> yeah, right. it really is, really is. i mean yeah. like he, he's not even he's not even a top five or top six player on chelsea's team I mean, you know I, I i don't you know it just doesn't make any sense yeah um you know what i think he'd get in united's midfield uh, probably yeah ahead of um, mctominay or fred He's not going to kick you those guys out. They're immense. <laughs> get a, get a Matic. <laughs> okay, Daz, last word. Um, well, I've got I've got two. Uh, first one is I'd probably watch Tiago fold laundry. God, I love that man. He's he's absolutely just a joy to watch. It's like it's it's just watching someone glide about almost like ethereally, like just so, so clearly just a cut above. And like you said, even when he cocks up, you're like, <laughs> oh, well, he's just going to score two more or, or make two more. Um, and the second one, the second part was, and it's actually part of what, uh, what um, Sean was talking about is uh, apparently Messi got up there and said, Hey, Robert, you know, we all know that this, you should have got this last year if they actually had been an award. So I thought if that's indeed the case, that that's that is classy of him. But um, yeah, man, I just I'm just looking forward to to Wednesday. So yeah, let's uh, let's 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 bring that on. Move to step in through a time machine and get that shit over with. Let's go. Oh. So um, we often say when it comes to Arsenal, you know, we they're not our business. I, Messi does not feel like he's our business anymore because we're in a different echelon. Um, Hopefully we'll be back next week to talk about the different echelon we've been performing in. <clears throat> so we'll be back after the Wolves game, uh, hopefully to talk about the Reds continuing winning streak. Uh, thanks to Das. Thanks to Sean. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, podcast, please share it with a friend. Follow us on Twitter. We only tweet and retweet from sources we think are credible. 
we will not be retweeting any Ballon d'Or stuff, I'm pretty sure. Thank you.